Right, hopefully you can see me. Um, oop, there's another one, Brad. Good on you. Right, so hopefully you can see me. I'm Dr. Gary Palmer. Um, today I am here on behalf of, and I get the right side of the t-shirt, that side, Stanley Sports. Um, and we are UK importer and distributor of the VO2 Master gas analyzer, which you can see in front of you. And I have one here as well. So uh, hopefully you can see the little screen. Most of what I'm going to be doing today is going to be on a quick slide presentation, as I said before. Any questions, um, fire me a question. I will try and mostly go through questions at the end of the presentation. I'm aware it's a lot of people's lunchtime. I'm going to try and keep this as quick as possible, but I have a habit of talking far too much. So um, I'll start off by just introducing myself because I think that potentially for some people could be quite useful. Uh, so my name is Dr. Gary Palmer. Um, I have an undergraduate degree from um, what used to be West Sussex Institute of Sports, uh, Institute of Higher Education. I think they're now called University College Chichester or something like that. It shows you how old I am. Um, I then did a PhD in exercise physiology in Cape Town uh, under the likes of Professor Tim Noakes, uh, Professor John Hawley, uh, Professor Steve Dennis with my three PhD supervisors. Um, I left Cape Town many, many years ago in the early to mid 90s um, and started and uh, lecturing sports science at Kingston University where I was uh, lecturer, senior lecturer, and I moved on to University of Wolverhampton um, and I had a readership post. So. I come at this from very, very much of an academic point of view. Um, and some of my early research was all about um, looking at, um, well, first of all, I was the first person to publish heart rate, uh, heart rate responses from elite athletes in real race settings. Uh, and then I got a whole load of data, which was collected by the Australian Institute of Sport, Dr. Dave Martin, who was one of my PhD examiners. Um, and I had a whole lot of power data from the likes of Stuart O'Grady, Cadell Evans, and we were again with first people to publish that power data. If I had something like this available at the time, life would have been brilliant. Now, I'm not just an academic, so um, a lot of people like to think of me as an academic, but I play around a bit. So um, as well as being director of Stanley Sports, director of Sports Test, which I've been for the last 17, 18 years, um, you know, I've consulted as physiologist to the South African Olympic triathlon team. Uh, and I've worked with a whole range of athletes right through from amateur athletes, right, right through to Olympic level runners, cyclists, triathletes um, in terms of age groupers in triathlon. I've coached world champions. Um, I used to work with people like Andy Tennant before he made it onto the, the as a world junior pursuit uh, champion. So I'm, I'm used to working with the endurance athletes and COVID brought me to this. And that's probably what, what sort of has got you guys here as well. Um, Bases accredited as an exercise physiologist and a fellow of American College of Sports Medicine. And most of my research, which is now quite historic, is all about sports performance, sports nutrition, and how we replicate that in the lab and we, how we enhance that again, which brings me all the time back to the VO2 Master. For the last 17 years, I've been running a company called Sports Test, and we provide fitness testing and coaching services. And every now and then, I pretend to be an athlete. So the photo here is me riding my bike uh, up the mountains in Denia. Um, but you pretty much name it, I've done it. I've done Ironman. Uh, I've done 10 days on the Tour de France route. I've done Paris-Roubaix. Um, you know, back of old, I was a 32-minute 10K runner. So I've, I've been there and done it. And sort of, again, I feel like wearing lots of hats, wearing a coaching hat, wearing applied exercise physiologist hat, um, you know, wearing an athlete hat, wearing um, an academic hat, this device for me fits so many roles in so many markets. And, you know, there's a, there's a mix of people on today. And I just want to give you an introduction of what the device is, what the VO2 master is, what it does and how it can help you guys out. So to me, why is it so, so special? Well, it's this, it's fully portable. Um, take off the head strap take off the hands Rudolph face mask and you've got a device here that's 220 grams that um, you can quite happily, um, you, you can quite happily send out an athlete. Where it goes and off you go. You are getting within 20 to 30 seconds um, metabolic data from that athlete. Uh, at the moment, that data is VO2 data, it's ventilatory data, um, Bluetooth connectivity links with a heart rate monitor. It comes bundled with a Wahoo kicker, but I quite happily use my Polar. Um, I can link up my power data. Anything that's Bluetoothable will link to the app. Um, so again, there's a lot of athletes that will use Moxie monitors, a whole wealth of stuff, but it's portable. 
the whole thing, and I just reach over here, comes to you in a nice little handy carrying box. Um, so it's all chuck it on a plane, chuck it wherever you go. Life is very, very easy. Um, the second thing about it, which I absolutely love, very, very simple to use. So I've got my phone in front of me today. You'll see a video later on. Um, as long as you've got a phone or a tablet at the moment, you have got a very, very simple to use app that you see that data live and instantaneously. If you're work working in a health club set setting, the athlete reports, the client reports are ready and available to you within seconds. As soon as you press the stop button, you press the next button, bang, your client report is ready. As an academic that wants more detailed data, you can get full detailed Excel data, TCX data that's downloaded on a one second data. So again, you've got that data that can then just be shipped to wherever, either airdrop from an Apple phone, uh, email through to wherever you need it to. So really, really easy to use. Highly accurate. Um, there are studies that have been done that show accuracy, reliability. Every unit is calibrated and you get a calibration. And I should have should have one here, but every unit comes with a, an assessment of calibration um, as it's shipped out to you. So again, we know we've got great reliability, great accuracy. Um, and again, we're one of the chapters on, on board at the moment. We're chatting, the, chatting to the other day, um, won't mention who it is, but we're saying that it's compared this to the Cortex and the data that he's getting compared to his VO2 master to his Cortex is actually very, very accurate. It's within uh, one or two um, milliliters per kilogram body weight. The beauty of this, I absolutely love. No cables, no hoses, no backpacks. So many, many years ago, I was fortunate enough to have access to a Cortex um, K2 B4 back at the time. And you had these two bloody great things that as you went for a run, it was bouncing around. Um, one of the academics that I work with uh, teaching um, at one of the nearby universities that works with a lot of the dancers says the dancers do a pyramid and they get smacked in the face by all the cables all the hoses just doesn't work this is literally that and your head's up and you go. there's nothing more to this everything is housed internally in this unit so in terms of portability and ease of use for everyone um, it's absolutely fabulous you can use it indoors outdoors under certain situations and when traveling. So again, if you are working with athletes, if you're looking at a research environment, if you're looking at that academic environment, for me, an academic environment where I used to teach 100 odd students in the lab, it would have been brilliant to take these and say, right, U20, U10, bugger off to the sports hall. U20, U10, bugger off to the set of stairs up the corridor. U15, go out to the hockey field. You know, it is, makes life so, so much easier, so much flexibility in what you're doing. Um, slight constraints with outdoors, which hopefully are going to be addressed by the guys in Canada. Uh, it has a shut off that once the temperature drops below 15 degrees, it will shut off to protect the O2 cells. So you can't go outside in the middle of snow and everything else. Again, it shouldn't get wet, although we're going to show you some photos later on where, you know, again, it's being sensible with it. Do you want to drop five grand's worth of kit into a swimming pool? It's up to you. It's how you want to use it. Um, one of the institutions wanted to use it for um, some surfing work, which great if you're just looking at the paddling impact, but perhaps if you're standing on a board and likely to fall off different situation that you perhaps need to, to, to worry about. If that's something that's a concern you want to look at, you know, feel free to shout me a question later on. Um, for those of you using it in a gym setting in that sort of environment, really effective in terms of um, high return of investment. So I know people that are charging sort of 60 to 80 pounds, sometimes more, depending on where you are in the, in the UK, uh, for a simple resting metabolic rate test, which is done in 20 minutes. Client report takes 30 seconds to print out, the whole appointment done um, in less than an hour. Uh, VO2 max tests to charge anything from 80 to 250 pounds. You know, so in terms of the outlay, return of investment is fabulous. In terms of academic, it's actually think about the student projects that could be available to you, an undergraduate projects, master's projects, um, and actually full-time research. So, I mean, I'm just, I get so excited. I'm yeah, not a salesman, but that is just brilliant to me. Absolutely fabulous. So, oh, you shouldn't have seen this slide. That's not, not the next slide. That's the first slide you should have got. Didn't forgot to change these bits out. Whole load of stuff that we can do with it. So the first one on here is resting metabolic rate tests. 
Um, protocol very, very easily set up. And as you can look at this bar up here, uh, we've got a, and I'm just gonna have to move that little bit there. We've got a resting metabolic rate test over here. Very, very easy to set up, easy to use protocol. Um, where you can have your client, athlete, um, individual resting for anything from five to 20 minutes to get a baseline, and then it will record from anything from five to a further 20 minutes. I tend to use a 10 minute settle in uh, and a 10 minute record phase for what we do. So that's the first use. Uh, now I can move back to my slides properly. Um, VO2 max testing, as you can see here, what we're doing is we're doing a VO2 max test in the lab. Um, I, I have a photo side on, but for some reason couldn't find it properly. Um, and we're literally using the Watt bike. The beauty again of this is this is a Watt bike atom. It's the commercial version. Apologies for the, the ship picture of the chair in the background. Um, but as the power changes in the setup on the VO2 master, it automatically changes in ergo mode what's going on on your Watt bike. Um, and again, if you've got a Wahoo kicker, if you've got a bike that's controlled by Bluetooth, it does often so uh, is both ways Bluetoothable. So it's very, very easy to set an athlete protocol up and not just record what the athlete's doing, but control the workloads under certain situations. Um, free mode. I love free mode. And this for me, as a sports scientist, is what I use more than anything else. I can go out for a run. I can look at the impact of my super duper uh, dragonfly, um, uh, sorry, mayfly spikes there, or I can look at the impact of my running shoes. I can look at the impact of different time trial positions. I can just have an athlete go and do an exercise protocol in free mode, and I can pull all that data down and I can analyze that data myself. So for me, as a sports scientist stroke academic, free mode is brilliant. Resting metabolic rate, the step test is probably more of a client facing type environment. Um, then the next two tests, we've got a 515 test and an interval protocol. To be honest with you, never used them. I haven't needed to in what I do. However, I've got quite a few clients that have bought the VO2 master um, that use the Moxie monitors. And again, Moxie uh, links directly with the software and they will use a 515 test and they'll get all the data that they need to um, from the 515 test. So. Uh, hopefully everything's good there. A couple of recent improvements. Um, calibration. Calibration syringe is now, um, doesn't come as standard. It's an additional that you need to purchase. Um, prices are going up in uh, about two weeks time, which is an absolute nightmare. Um, but the calibration, and I'll take you through the calibration in a second, makes life so much easier, so much more effective in terms of both volume and gas concentration. It improves ventilating accuracy from about 4% down to about 2%. Um, and again, the way that a lot of people that don't have a calibration syringe need to calibrate is they manually calibrate, face mask goes on, and you get your individual to exercise, and that will run the calibration process. But using the calibration syringe, that's taken out of that process now. Um, the next two things, again, are literally the latest versions of software, and I can be honest with you, haven't used them. Um, but for me as an athlete, and I'm a runner at the moment more than anything else, I hate running with my phone. Um, again, just as a piece of, I've been using a Super Sapiens uh, continual glucose monitor for the last couple of weeks. I finished it now, it's not on. But the nightmare of having to use my phone as a bridge really, really put me off the device when I was running. Now you can calibrate your VO2 master on your phone, on your tablet, and then link it to many Garmin devices. Now I'm a bit old and poor, so... I've only got a Fenix 5. It won't link to the 5, it'll link to the 6, it'll link to the 7, it'll link to a lot of the edge devices. It will, well, there's a new fancy watch that I can't even remember the name of it. It will link to a lot of the devices. It doesn't link to my 5. But what you will do is you'd run your calibration using the app and then you send the data directly to your Garmin. So again, you've now got a situation that me as an athlete or me sending an athlete out to train, I know that that Garmin is picking that data up and I can analyze that data later on. And the athlete then doesn't need to be running around with a phone or a tablet. I've seen examples of people with iPads sat on the front of a motorbike riding alongside of a peloton of cyclists so they can see that data live. Now, again, that data can go direct to the athlete's Garmin. There is also new improved reporting of the step test, including the termination of uh, VT1, VT2. To be honest, again, I, I can't wait. I've been away the last four or five days. Um, just got back from the Channel Islands at like half 10 last night. So I'm a little bit fried. My brain's a little bit. Um, I need to play with that. I need to see how it works. But again, that is 
should be in the latest version of software. If it's not, it's coming in the next it, uh, iteration. So all of these are free upgrades to you, not costing you anything really, really useful um, things to use. Now, calibration. Hopefully, I can play you uh, if I press this. So the process of calibrating the VO2 master is really simple. First of all, we're going to open the app. Once the app opens, it's going to go through various stages. We're going to set our athlete up. Uh, we're going to check for the user piece that we're using. And in this example, we're going to set up to do a step test, the VO2 max test. Uh, you want to set your VO2 master up. You always want to make sure you've got a fresh filter going in every time. And for the athlete that we're assuming that we're going to use, I'm going to use a medium user piece. So that screws on um, there and that's ready to roll. And from that, we're then going to put um, this connecting piece on that just gives us a good seal for the calibration. And we attach that just by a very simple twist to our calibration syringe. In terms of the setup process, we'd literally go through the setup by hitting the setup button. Going for the graded exercise test in this case, we can check our athlete status and update that if needed and run through the process where we're looking at the warm up settings, the testing intensity settings. But I want to show you the calibration. In this example, I'm using a medium user piece and I'm going to hit next and I'm using the small mask. So again, I'm going to hit next. And from that, I can now calibrate uh, my flow sensor and I will hit start. And what we then need to do is then we need to in a smooth rhythm setting, effectively match what is being asked by the timing bar. And what we see is the flow calibration process literally just moves across. And we're trying to match that timing bar so that we flow at the same time as the timing bar. And that is the very simple process of how you calibrate the volume. The next stage is to calibrate the gas concentration. You can skip the gas con concentration at this point, or as we're going to here, we can use the flow sensor again. So what you do is you would either uh, allow the athlete to breathe through this normally, or you just continue this process where you inhale and exhale for around about a minute or two. Um, and by the end of this process, as you can see here, that the calibration process will be completed and the system will be ready to be used. And that is the oxygen sensor calibrated, so we're now ready to perform our test, and we will take that through to the next stage to start the test. As I say, if you're doing a resting metabolic rate test, you need to ensure you use the resting user piece, and you would adjust your VO2 master calibration syringe to a one litre volume rather than a three litre volume. The reason I wanted to do that on a video is that way you've got to see um, the test screen, you've got to see the calibration process as it went live. So hopefully that was of use to you. Um, well, didn't want to do that. I need to get my next slide. Uh, there we go. A couple of different examples of use. Really simple. Um, now, this needs to stay dry. Um, it can be used up to quite a high humidity basis. As you can see, Christian's using it. We use it here in um, our endless pool. So it is down to the user whether you're going to use it in that environment. But we're finding some really great VO2 data um, that you know is, is almost impossible to get anywhere else. You can use it out and about. Um, so this is actually my wife going for a run um, in the local forest over Canic Chase. Uh, loads of people using them on the bikes. Um, you know, very, very useful information that you can't get without those cables, those backpacks, the changes in aerodynamics, being able to visually see what's going on around you. Gym work, boxes, kickboxers, on the weights, CrossFit athletes, tying up with a MOXIE sensor, there is so much that you can do to get um, background data from totally, totally unusual situations. I mean, again, one of the things going back many, many years, 
Um, I worked with the English karate team. I went to world and European championships with the English karate team. Um, and we tried to set up something like this, but using the Oxycon. Um, and, you know, we needed a two meter of cable. And as you were trying to get a kick and a punch combination, just like the, the cable was pulling out as all sorts of, so being able to be completely free in what you do makes life so much easier. Um, gym use, you know, and again, depending on what you're trying to assess, it can be really, really good. And it gives different individuals a different, uh, almost a USP, you know, a unique selling point in terms, I can assess what you're doing. I can assess accurately a VO2 max. I can assess accurately what level of intensity you're working at. I can assess accurately your training zones and I can assess accurately how you're changing in your fitness over time. So there's loads to be done in, in that environment. Um, we're also finding, uh, and this is um, a photo from the States, but the guys in Canada are doing an awful lot with the military. Um, I know there's one of the guys on the call down here, which is absolutely really brilliant, that's working with the fire service, fire and rescue services. Um, and you know, there's so many different modes that can be used. And I've just literally thrown up a couple of examples, soccer, so on, so on. Um, I think there might be, there might have been a white water canoeing one that should have been in there, but it's not. Loads and loads of different examples um, that I'd love to hear about. I'd love photos of, I'd love to be able to pass on information about what you do. That's pretty much for me a wrap up of everything that I wanted to cover with you. Um, I, it's been really quiet, so um, I haven't seen any questions pop up. Let me just have a make sure that I haven't missed anything. Um, I haven't seen any questions pop up. I'd love to answer questions either here in the forum. Um, so maybe we we'll start using the chat forum now if you want to, or contact us directly. Um, you know, you've, we, we will email you again, and we do really appreciate your time um, signing up, signing on to this. Um, and hopefully this is the first stage towards you getting better use from your VO2 master or jumping on and purchasing one. For the guys that have got already, uh, the nasty information is there is a price rise coming um, that is coming the end of the month. Um, so if you need any additional spares, any additional filters, any additional user pieces, battery covers, anything like that, uh, you want to grab a calibration syringe because you've not got one, now's the time to buy. If you haven't got one already, now's the time to buy. So, um, you know, great. It would be good to uh, chat to you. I'm going to just try and, ooh, my mouse has gone a bit haywire. Also put a link um, and into um, the chat in here. Boom, 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 boom. Paste that. So that is also a link, hopefully, if it comes through. As it come through, da, 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 da. Oh, sorry. This is where this is where me and Zoom don't come together. Um, come on, no, I'm trying to I'm trying to send you a link so you can book on my um, book on my my book a call if you need to. No, it's not working. I will get onto that now. So, any questions? Drop us a, drop us a message. Um, for some strange reason, I've stopped screen scaring. So let's come back onto Zoom. There you are. You're still there, which is good. We still haven't. Right, let's just try this. Chat. Ah, oh, have I put it in? No, I haven't. Who can see messages? Type your message in there. Bang. There you go. So I've sent you all a message. So that's now got my diary. Thank you very much for your time, everyone, this afternoon. Um, don't think anyone's thrown anything in the chat so far and thank you for your time great to see you all and look forward to chatting to you in the near future